All right, in this example, we're going to graph the rational function x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 over x squared plus x minus 6. So a couple things I'm going to do. Um, first off, I'm going to think about um, really what's the domain of this function um, and any sort of vertical um, asymptotes. I think that's the first thing that, that might be useful here. So to figure out um, any vertical asymptotes, the first thing I'm going to do is set the denominator equal to 0. And this is going to factor as x plus 3, x minus 2 equals 0. So um, at x equals negative 3, we'll get 0. And at x equals positive 2, we'll get 0. Again, this doesn't necessarily mean that we have vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and 2. It, it just depends on if we get 0 out of the numerator as well or not. So I'm going to plug negative 3 into the numerator, and I'm going to plug positive 2 also. Well, I'm going to plug it in everywhere, but I'm interested in what happens in the numerator. Because we know already that you get 0 in the bottom in both cases. If you plug negative 3 in, negative 3 cubed is negative 27 negative 3 squared would be positive 9, uh, negative 3 times negative 4 would be positive 12, and then minus 4. Well that's negative 27, um, 9 and 12 is 21, so negative 27 plus 21 would be negative 6, minus 4 would give us negative 10 over 0. So since we're getting something non-zero over 0, that tells me that x equals negative 3, is a vertical asymptote. Notice if we plug in 2 though, if we plug 2 into the numerator we get 2 cubed which is 8 plus 2 squared which is 4 minus uh, 4 times 2 which will be 8 minus 4. 8 minus 8 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0, so we're getting 0 over 0. So that tells me at x equals 2 there's going to be a hole in the graph. Okay, fair enough. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting these things on my on my graph here, and just kind of you know uh, fill it in as we go. Okay, so let's see. We said at negative three, we've got a vertical asymptote. So negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, um, we. I'm going to keep in mind that at two, there's going to be a hole in the graph. So we'll come back to that. Um, okay, let's also keep thinking about asymptotes here because I like to do asymptotes because it kind of gives me um, sort of some, you know, sort of, I almost think about them as little fences. It keeps usually everything trapped in there. Um, so for horizontal asymptotes, notice in this case the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. So that means that there are no horizontal asymptotes. But again, there will be an oblique asymptote since the degree of the numerator is one larger than the degree of the denominator. Um, so to figure that out, um, to figure out what the, what the oblique asymptote is, um, we could even go ahead and simply just do our, our long division. Um, I think I'm going to try to reduce this polynomial a little bit first. Okay, we said the denominator factors as x plus 3 times x minus 2. Um, we made the observation that if you plug 2 into the numerator, we get 0 out. That means that the numerator factors as x minus 2 times something. Well, the way that we can figure out uh, what we need to multiply by is we can do long division. Uh, we can take x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. If I divide that by x minus 2, I'm going to get the, the missing factor. And to do this long division, or excuse me, to do this division, we could do long division, or I'm going to use synthetic division. So uh, we'll put a positive 2 outside, and then 1, 1, negative 4, negative 4 underneath. Okay, so if we drop the 1 down, uh, then we multiply, so 2 times 1 is 2, then we add, so 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, negative 4 plus 6 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, that gives us our remainder of 0. Since we started with something cubed, this will be our x squared, this will be our x, this will be our constant. 
So it says the numerator actually factors as x minus 2 times x squared plus 3x plus 2. And I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to factor this just a little bit further if possible. So we've got our x minus 2. I'm not canceling anything out yet. x squared plus 3x plus 2 actually factors as x plus 1 and x plus 2. We've got x plus 3 in the denominator and x minus 2 in the denominator. I'm going to go ahead and cancel those out. So we're left with x plus 1 over x plus 2 over x plus 3. And I don't think we can really reduce this much any, any further. The next thing I'm going to do is think about x-intercepts. So to figure out x-intercepts, we let y equals 0, or the left side be 0. So we would have 0 equals x plus 1 times x plus 2 over x plus 3. Well, if you multiply both sides of our fraction by, or excuse me, of our equation by x plus 3, uh, we'll just be left with 0 equals x plus 1 times x plus 2. Or again, equivalently, you know, to me, I think if a fraction is going to equal 0, it's the top part that has to be 0. If we set the first factor equal to 0, we'll get x equals negative 1. If we set the second factor equal to 0, we'll get x equals negative 2. So those are going to be my x-intercepts. So I might as well go ahead and put those on our graph. Um, we said x equals negative 3 was our vertical asymptote. So at negative 1 and negative 2, um, it looks like we're also getting x-intercepts. So there's negative 2 and negative 1. Again, notice both of each of these have multiplicity of 1. And again, since they have a multiplicity of 1, that means that our function simply has to pass through the graph. It can come back up, but it won't simply just bounce off the x-axis. Okay, so let's see. Um, from this formula, um, from this simplified version, I'm also going to find the y-intercept. So to figure out the y-intercept, we simply plug in x equals 0. So if we plug in 0, well, we'll have 1 times 2, which is 2. On the bottom, we'll have 3. So it looks like we're getting 2 thirds as our y-intercept. So we'll stick positive 1 up there. We'll say positive 2 thirds is you know, somewhere inside of there. OK, let's see. A few other things here. Um, notice we have x plus 1 times x plus 2 over x plus 3. Again, if we multiply that out, we've got x plus 3 in the denominator. We would have x squared plus 2x plus 1x, which would give us 3x plus 2. Um, again, there's no horizontal asymptotes because the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator. But this function will have oblique asymptotes. Okay? It does have an oblique asymptote because the numerator is 1 degree larger. So to find that oblique asymptote, I'm going to divide um, the numerator by the denominator. But I'm going to use synthetic division. So we have positive 1x squared, positive 3x, and positive 2. On the outside, I'm going to use the opposite sign, or negative 3. I drop my 1 down. Negative 3 times 1 would be negative 3. Um, we add those together. We'll get 0. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. We add those. We get 2. This is going to be our remainder. Since we started with something squared, this is our x and this is our constant. So really it says what we can do is we can write our original function, or our simplified f uh, function, x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x plus 3. It says we can really write that as 1x plus our remainder of 2 over x plus 3. But again, if you kind of forget about everything, if you forget about the remainder, whatever's out front, that's going to be your oblique asymptote. So in this case, our oblique asymptote is going to be the line y equals x. So I'm going to go back and stick that on the graph. So let's see, y equals x. Remember, that's just kind of a, a, a y-intercept of 0 that goes through the origin. Okay, so now we've got, um, we've got our asymptotes. We've got a few points here. 
Um, I think the last thing I would do, you could always start plotting a few points. Um, one thing, you know, I think to help me figure out sort of what's going on, it clearly looks like the graph is in the top, uh, the top, you know, sort of in between my asymptotes up here. And I think that's what has to happen. Um, notice it couldn't come from the bottom. Because if it came from the bottom, again, it would have to go through our x-intercept of negative 1, and then it would have to cross the x-axis again to get to our y-intercept, and um, then we would have another x-intercept, which, which is not allowed. So you could plot a few points just to figure out a little bit better what's going on, but I'm going to make the conclusion that our graph is doing something like that. It's basically staying... Um, Above our to the right of our horizontal to the right of our vertical and above our oblique. Again, always plot a few more points just to make sure. The other thing I'm going to figure out is you know sort of to the left of our vertical asymptote is the graph up here. Is it down here? Um, well, let's plug in maybe negative four and see what value we get out. Notice that this is the line y equals x. This was x equals negative three. So this point on uh, the intersection, that would be the point negative 3 comma negative 3. So I'm going to use that as a reference here. Okay, so let's see, where did our formula go? Um, okay, so we had f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x plus 3, so I'm just using this one again. I think we said we're going to plug in the value negative 4 just to see where we're at. So f of negative 4, negative 4 squared would be positive 16, um, positive 3 times negative 4 would be negative 12, uh, plus 2, negative 4 plus 3 would be negative 1, so it looks like we have 4 plus 2, which is 6 over negative 1, it looks like we're getting negative 6 out. So okay, so since this is the line y equals x, um, this would be the point negative 4 comma negative 4. Well, negative 6 is certainly a little further down than that. So there's going to be another point on our graph, negative 4 comma 6. And again, to, to approach this vertical um, asymptote, I know it can't go up because then you would have another x-intercept. So I know it's kind of going down there, and to get close to that horizontal asymptote, it'll just have to move, uh, it'll get closer to that, excuse me, that oblique asymptote, it'll get closer to that oblique asymptote as you move to the left.